Hi, I'm Mark Edward Lewis, and welcome to Cinema Sound. Microphones, choices, positions, volumes, recording levels, recorders, processes, tools. Talk about lavalier placement, as in hiding a lavalier. What's the biggest killer of microphones? I'm just moving in closer. Are they actually going to do action? Are they going to beat on each other? Are they going to be sweaty? I put something else on them, or I'm just going to mic them with a boom pole and a hypercardioid. <laughs> Your job as a filmmaker is always to direct focus. This might be your only exception for that. Let's listen to the music and see what happens. What to have on set, what not to do. That thing. What to do. I need exfiltration right away. And with it on. I need exfiltration right away. It's a battery of hours of education and knowledge that just ain't intuitive. Maybe we should be spending more of our time in film school learning about how to do great audio in production and post. False economy is pretty much the death of most productions and certainly post-production. Behind your neck, not on your neck. That's bad. This is one of the most important parts of the post-production audio process. And you wield swords and chase maidens around. And you wield swords and chase maidens around. Pop filter to solve plosive problems if you're doing ADR. Don't let it happen to you. Keyframes are not going to get you there in terms of just moving a volume knob. And I'm going to be the talent. And I'm going to be the producer. I got to wear the headphones and the pants and do it all. This ain't going to be any easy ride. It's my dead cat. I start dying because the last thing Hollywood wants you to know. And they're like, what was that? And you're like, mm, just audio stuff. Hey, it's NAB 2017. Who's excited? Woo! Like six of you are excited. Awesome. How many of you, by show of hands, how many of you have horror stories about mixing audio? Who's got that? Oh, I'm so sorry. And now, how about this? How many of you wish you had the techniques, the technology, the skill to get that Hollywood audience impact on your productions? You know, that, that unfair competitive advantage that big budget pictures always have? Who wants that? Hey, about 12 of you. Now, you guys are all in the right place. The rest of you, I don't know what you all are doing here, but you're welcome to stay. We're going to have a great time for the next half hour. I'm Mark Edward Lewis. I'm a filmmaker, a post-production supervisor, and I've gone all over the world training filmmakers on how to get just that, that Hollywood audience impact into their productions. And I do it using the most immersive audio element, audio and sound, sound and post, and all of that. I have a, well, as you can see, <laughs> an online portal called cinemasound.com. On cinemasound.com, we have an updated blog that happens every day on reviews and demos of equipment and all kinds of educational content. We have over 75 hours of education to make sure that you get exactly that, Hollywood, unfair competitive advantage into your productions using audio and sound. Now, uh, how many of you use uh, Logic Pro? Who are my Logic Pro people? No one. Awesome. How about Pro Tools? Pro Tools people, I got 10, 11, 12, 34. Oh, nice. Welcome, welcome. Um, Nuendo, Cubase, who are those? Anybody? Thank you very much. What's your name? Ben? I'll call you B. How about that? Uh, how about this? How many of you wish you could use one of these programs? Anybody? No. Last question. It probably doesn't apply to any of you. How many of you use Photoshop? Anybody? Anybody? Just about everybody. And did you know that if you're using Photoshop, you also have access to an incredibly powerful digital audio workstation? Did you know that? What's it called? Audition. Audition, yes. And today we're going to be looking at some aspects of Adobe Audition that we use every day in post-production, but you may not be familiar with. Okay? Let's check it out. Oh, and by the way, we're going to be doing it using one of the example videos from Cinema Sound called the Action Sequence. And we have a very special treat today. We have the star of that sequence here with us, Rivka Ravenwood. She's right down here in front. Wait, wave. There she is. There she is. Go up and introduce yourself after. But let's take a look at this mix. Now, most mixes in a Hollywood big budget production... Um, most mixes are, you know, hundreds of channels wide, 
if not sometimes a couple of thousand channels wide. And in this case, this particular mix is 80, 80, which isn't a lot, but it's more than a few. And given the plug-in density that I have in here, it would pretty much fry most digital audio workstations. But I just want to give you this breakdown of what the mix looks like, and then I'll run you through a couple of clips. So up here at the top, we've got buses. Um, and you're like, well, what's a bus? Can I get to downtown on it? No, you cannot. But we'll be talking about that in a moment. Uh, let's see. I've got dialogue in the orange. We've got sound effects. There's some nice foley. We've got all the music stems. We've got ambiences and then reference files from set that I might want to go back and check. Let's look at the mix window. So you can check this out. The mix window is basically the same thing as the edit window, only a horizontal presentation of it with cool looking faders. Check it out. Here are those buses again that again will not get you to downtown, but they're free. Here's the dialogue, here's the sound effects, there's the foley in a cool different color. I don't know what color that is, but it's cool. Here's the stems of music, there's the ambiences, and there are those reference tracks again. So let me show you some clips from this. Now, like I said, this is the action bit, so you're not going to see a lot of awesome drama or, you know, romance. So just hold on, check it out. Here it is. There's some action there. Let's look at the sequence we're actually going to be working on. And this has a little dialogue to it. Check it out one more time. I need exfiltration right away. How's that? Thank you. Thank you. What if I can't? It's a long walk home. All right, cool. What we talk about in Cinema Sound is that the most important thing you need to start any mix with is making sure that the story elements are clean. And for those of you who have looked at anything from Cinema Sound or been on Sound Advice at all, you know that story elements are always the dialogue. So we're going to do a little solo here. We're going to solo the dialogue tracks and just turn on the microscope and take a listen to what this sounds like. It's going to be kind of hard. It's, I know it's nice and quiet in here, but uh, just you can... Use your, turn on your, the super hearing sense. Let's check it out what happens here. I need exfiltration right away. And then we have a voiceover that I'll also yes. solo. What if I can't? It's okay. Now that we have three tracks. We have one that was recorded on set. That's this down one down here that was recorded with a Rode NTG8. Really nice microphone. We have ADR. And then we have a voiceover that we're going to check out in a second. I'm going to jump here so you can hear the difference. Listen to I the... I need exfiltration right away. NTG8. And here is the ADR. What if I can't? Notice how the ADR is really dark, right? Can you tell out there that it's a lot darker? First thing we need to do is clean up this NTG8. Now, most digital audio workstations, how do you have to clean up dialogue? You have to send it out, right? You have to send it to some other application. You have to deal with it out here, clean it up, and then bring it back. But not so in Adobe Audition. Check this out. If I go over here and I double click on this cool little clip, I get this awesome, cool-looking window. It's called the spectral view. Now, most of you are used to looking at this view like this, right? The waveform. And that's cool. But it doesn't really help us in terms of being able to get sound effects happening. I'm going to zoom out, and I'll show you here. This means early, late, high frequencies, low, well, if I get down here, low frequencies. And if it's brighter, that means it's louder. Here's what this dialogue sounds like while you look at the spectral view. I need exfiltration right away. You can hear that for sure, can't you? I need exfiltration. Right away. But if you listen before she starts speaking, gross. Nobody likes that. That's noise. In fact, you got pitches in here from one of the fluorescent lights that we had while we were shooting. So check this out. What we can do in Audition is select the noise and then tell Audition, hey man, learn this. And then everywhere else you find it, it will kill it and leave the dialogue alone. I know, crazy, right? So check it out. I'm going to go up here to Effects. Let me zoom in so you can see a little bit better. Noise reduction restoration, noise reduction process, and then up here I have capture noise print. Once I do that, it all lights up and I get some cool lights. I can let me zoom back out here. Oops, let's go here. I'm going to select this whole thing so we can listen to the result. I have it. Let me show you these two cool controls. Noise reduction. This basically means it's like a wet dry meter, right? So if I have it all the way off, I got all the noise. If I have it all the way up, the noise will go away. And then how much of a reduction do I want? In this case, let's just try 12 decibels. See what happens. I need exfiltration right away. I need exfiltration right away. 
So check this out. If I turn it off, you may not remember what it's like. I see exfiltration right away. What? Come on. That's fantastic. I see exfiltration right away. Now, those of you that are in front of the center speaker probably are hearing a little bit of artifacture, and it's there. It's a, what's that? Oh, no, it's not you. It's them. Okay, we're going to bring down the attenuation just a little bit, down to eight decibels, and see how that sounds. I see exfiltration right away. Much better. I'm going to hit apply, and look what happens. This stuff gets nice and dark. In fact, in between the syllables and overtones, it's nice and dark. If I go back to the context of the mix, we're going to go here. Check it out. I need exfiltration right away. Of course, it's now in a mix mode, but it's quiet. And it's nice and clean. Now, anybody tried to mix ADR? Who's mixed ADR in here? Yeah, there's only like four of you. There's a good reason for that. It's very difficult. And in this case, we talked about what if I can't? this ADR channel feeling dark compared to that really bright NTG8. Now, most of us, what we would do is that, oh, I'll add an EQ, I'll add the high end, I'll take out the low end. But there's something about this dialogue, if you listen carefully. What if I can't? Notice the word can't comes out loud. It goes, can't. What if I can't, right? What if I can't? Can't gets really loud. And what do we do about that? Well, I could use a fader, I can automate, or I can use a compressor. But I don't want to use a lot of plugins. I just want to use one plugin to do as much as I can. Efficiency processing. There's something that Audition does that's amazing. Most digital audio workstations allow you to use track effects. A track effect means if I put a uh, plug-in on one tr like track, all of the clips from there to the end of the piece get affected the same, which is awesome. You can see I've already got a basic grade EQ on all of this, and so it's all going to have a nice, cool sound. But sometimes I want individual control over a clip, just like I have in a nonlinear editor. And in Audition, I can do that. Clip effects. You can see that, the difference between track and clip. I'm going to select the ADR, and I'm going to use a thing called a multi-band compressor. Multi-band compressor is just like a regular compressor, only totally different. It's actually four independent compressors focused on a frequency band. In this case, since we know that the female voice hovers, the fundamental frequency hovers around 150 hertz, we want to control that fundamental bass part of her voice on this particular band, the low mids, the high mids, and then all of her sibilance and everything else above here. I'm going to click on link band controls. And for those of you who have any experience with compressors, you know that I'm going to add six to one ratio, which is pretty strong. If you don't, come check us out on cinemasound.com. We talk all about it. I'm going to slow down the attack. I'm going to quicken the release. As I play this, you'll notice red little lines that come up. That indicates attenuation on the individual channels. Check out what happens. I'm going to put this into a loop. And so that I don't have to keep hitting play and stop. Check it out. What if I can't? In fact, we're going to solo what if I this can't? track. What if I can't? What if I can't? We're going to bring down the threshold. What if I can't? What if I can't? There's those red lines. I'm going to make up the gain. What if I can't? What if I can't? And notice that these lines here, these bands, are working much harder than anything what else, which means that the actual frequency of that track is being changed by a compressor, right? That's crazy. Only EQs are supposed to do that, but a multi-band compressor will. Now, I loved how the high frequencies were. I don't want to attenuate those. We want to leave those alone, so I'm going to leave that threshold up there. I'm going to bring the bass, her fundamental, down. I'm going to bring down the low, uh, low mids, and now let's see how it is. What if I can't? What if I can't? In fact, I'm going to link a can't? little bit more, bring it down I just can't? slightly more. What if I can't? Now, that's starting to sound like that NTG-8, right? Let's check it out. If I close this and solo the NTG-8, here's the NTG-8. I need exfiltration right away. There's the NTG-8. Here is the ADR. What if I can't? Pretty good, right? But check out the word can't. Remember the word can't went can't like this? What if I can't? Nice and clean, which is the nice benefit of having a compressor changer sound rather than just an EQ. So using a multiband compressor to do the ADR mixing is also very, very possible. And the multiband compressor that's in Audition is one of the best. It's amazing. So let's check out the third piece of dialogue, the voiceover. Let's just turn this here. We'll go like this. Here we go. Negative arrow. Lose your tail. Then hit. I'm just going to turn this up because I know it's probably hard to hear in here. Let me zoom out. There we go. God, I made a keyframe out of that. Here we go. Check it out. 
Negative arrow, lose your tail, then head to the LZ. Now some of you are like, hey man, that's you. And it's true. And the last thing I want is any of you to think that, oh, Mark's just getting into another one of his productions, another cameo. Nobody wants that. So plus the fact that she's actually doing like a subdermal transceiver looking thing. So we don't want it to sound like me. And we need it to kind of be futzed, you know, and sound cool. So the first thing we need to do, I'm going to go to the next window. And I'm going to change my voice. Because I hate listening to myself. Negative error. Does anybody in here like listening to yourself? Anybody? Good. Uh, you? Narcissist. Negative error. Okay. We're going to go to pitch shift. You have to be careful how you say that. Pitch shifter. And for those of you who are musical, you know that a semitone is the same as a half step and, or a hundred cents. And we just raised this a couple of bucks, 200 cents. Negative arrow, lose your tail, then head to the LZ. And some of you are like, man, you kind of sound chipmunky. I'm like, yeah, but you wouldn't have thought that if you didn't know what I already sounded like, right? But this isn't the problem. We want to make this sound like a trans, a subdermal transceiver. And again, I could use a distortion plugin and an EQ and roll off the lows and the highs. I want to use one plugin to get all that done. And there's a cool thing under the special window called Guitar Suite. What? Come on, that's intense. Who's my guitar players in here? Duran, you play guitar? I didn't know that. Wait, who else? Okay, like three of you. So check this out. I got a compressor. I got filter. I got distortion. I got amplifier. All of these are convolution modeled amplifiers built in. So guitar players, if it says classic British stack, what are they? What amplifier are they really talking about? Classic British stack? Okay, you don't know. What is it? British stack? You don't know? Nobody knows what that is, but the American combo... Marshall stack for sure, right? Absolutely. Now listen, I've got this cool little, where is it? Cinema Sound Futz. Now check out what this sounds like. All I did was instantiate a guitar amp modeler. Come on. Already done, right? It sounds like it's in their head and it's, it's a transmission and it's fantastic. A guitar amp model, who knew? But I also want to add something else so that it feels like it was transmitted over bits and all that other stuff. And on cinemasound.com, we talk about all the modulation plugins and how to mess with them and have a good time. This is called a flanger. And it suffices to say that a flanger basically takes one signal, splits it into two, does all kinds of phasing and LFO and weird stuff, and then brings it back together. So I'm going to just show you this cool thing that I made just for this. Check it out. Right? It feels, I mean, it's kind of unintelligible. So we're going to bring down the wet-dry mix a little bit more. But so we keep that cool sound, but it makes it a little more intelligible. Right now, for sure. Oh, you guys can't see the screen. How horrible. Right now, it's definitely in her head. It definitely does not sound like me. Thank you. And it's got a cool transmission to it. Now, we always say, don't pan your dialogue. Leave it in the center channel. But just because it's NAB 2017, let's see what happens. Because it should feel a little different. Let's pan it a little bit to the right. It definitely sets it off from us who are so, you know, bludgeoned with center channel stuff all the time. Now, some of you have asked on Cinema Sound, how do I get this cool surround window, right? How do I get that? What, what's the setting in the pan window to do that? There's no setting in the pan window. It's all in the output. Let me show you. Right now, it's being routed to a surround bus. This bus I created, and we show you how to do this on Cinema Sound, is a 5-1 bus. If I route it to the stereo master, watch what happens. Boo, hiss, left, right, right? I didn't do anything except change the output. If I go back to the dialog, 5-1 stare, uh, five one dialog bus, I get my thing, my little cool surround thing back. This is basically, we call this the puck, which naturally makes the rest of this the hockey rink. So let me show you a cool hockey rink example using one of the stems in the music. Since we are in a cool sort of surround sound here, this is the loops. I'm going to go back to the action sequence. And just listen to this loop track. I'm going to open this up. Notice this is a stereo file being played in a surround environment. So you get this cool, you know, left and right action, which I can change using the stereo spread. Check it out. All rear. Now, this is just a loop, right? No big deal. But what's cool is I can, without the composer's permission, automate this and make all kinds of cool effects. Check this out. All 
All right, that's enough. So I'm going to put this back on read, and let's play it and see if it did it. That's super cool, right? Let's check it out in context. Uh, what else have I got soloed here? So all of a sudden, without the composer's permission, we changed and made the mix a lot more dynamic. Oh, look, I'm a composer. I can make fun of us. But don't invite the composer to the dub. It's usually a bad idea for every reason I can think of. Let me show you something else. Let me zoom in on this pan. See this little thing right here? It's like a little divot. I don't know if you can see it, but I can take the puck and put it over here. And what happens is, let me solo this channel again. All of the sound only comes out of the right channel that the automation is still going, but is not affecting the channel anymore. I can drop it into one of those little divots, and all of a sudden, automation's wiped out, and I can check it out in one channel, once again. Only the right channel. The minute I pull it out, I'm back in the automation. I can do it in the surrounds, I can do it in the center, anywhere. Watch what happens if I put this into the center, though. Nothing. Why is that? Because I also have independent center channel control. What? So that I can create phantom center with left and right in mono or just center direct, which is a cool effect if you know about that. There's also something else that's really cool I have independently. Anybody know what else I have independently? LFE, that's right. Check this out. No matter where I put that panner, I have a special LFE channel dedicated just to me. Come on. It's a... Yeah. Love it. So, this is with surround and how you route it there. Now, some of you are already like, can we, can we get back to the bus bit? Because that bus thing, I, I, I don't know why we can't get to downtown. And why are you using it if you can't get to downtown? I know. Let me show you. So, when we get to the end of a mix, usually the director's freaking out and unhappy, out of time, and over budget. And he wants to go, 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 go. And we want to make global changes to the disciplines, like dialogue. I want the dialogue to be brighter. Well, what am I going to do? Put a plug in on every one of those channels and try to you know, add it and make it bright? Oh, my gosh. No. <laughs> so what we do, if you look carefully at the top of this channel, you'll see that each one of these dialogue channels is also routed to the dialogue bus. I've made it a 5-1 channel that shows up and returns here. There it is. And it's also going to the 5-1 print master. I've got a parametric EQ on here. And what that allows me to do is change the sound of all the dialogue tracks if I want. Let's go back to the dialogue example again. I'm just going to pull up some high frequencies, and you'll hear it go up on her dialogue and, well, my dialogue. I need exfiltration right away. What if I... Those speakers really like that guitar amp plug-in, don't they? It's like, wow. So you can see that went all across all the dialogue channels. Look at the Foley track, if you can see. Watch what's happening on this Foley track, which is right here. It's automated, and I can solo it. And although you probably can't hear it in this room, it's very noisy. You get all the gun Foley, all of her clothing. It's all soloed, and I can isolate it. Bam. All the control I want. Now, some of you are like, OK. This is cool. So you mean on my deliverables, I can take all my buses, route them to a 5-1 master, and then master that and make like an overall mix, like mastering? Yes. You're all very smart. Check it out. I can, as I have here, this is the 5-1 print master. All of these buses are going to the 5-1 print master, and then the print master is going to the default 5-1 output, which is how you're all hearing it. On this, I've got this cool mastering plugin to try to make up for the fact that we're in a super noisy room. <laughs> no one's impressed. Okay, so some of you are like, okay, so to be compliant with deliverables, I like in Dolby, like how Dolby says you have to deliver it this way, otherwise guess who calls? quality control, right? On your, your delivery, they're like, hey, man, your LFE track is full bandwidth, and that sucks. 
you got to do something about that. And what do we do? Well, we got to roll off all frequencies from 85 hertz and up, right? So all we get are those low frequencies. And you're like, well, Mark, the way you have this routed, I know what to do. I'll go like this, and I'll route an EQ across the master, and I'm going to go here. Oh, let's see. I want to default, and I'm going to do uh, low pass. I'm going to do 48 dB per octave, like Dolby says, and I'm going to say 85 dB. There it is. It's all rolled off. Fantastic. I'm going to hit play, and what do I get? Why do I only get bass? What? Across all the channels it went. Oh man, what? Well, how do I do that? There's no routing in Audition. What do I do? Of course there's routing in Audition. It's a secret. But now that you're all here, it's no longer a secret. Check it out. See this little circuit looking thing? That's a technical term, by the way. Some of you already know what to do. Look at this. This is a routing matrix for all of the surround capable plugins that when I turn these off, all but the LFE, they all bypass. And now it's only affecting the LFE, this EQ setting right here. Everything else is bypassing. Check it out. It's all back. I need exfiltration right away. Now you can't tell that the LFE is only bringing a lot. You have to trust me, but I promised it is because you've got all of the tracks returned, right? Super dope, right? Super cool. Who's got questions? I got another really cool thing I want to show you. Anybody got questions so far? I got hands rubbing heads. Okay, I'm going to move on. The next thing, and this is, you know, I, I work, look, I'll confess. I work in everything. I work in Pro Tools, I work in Logic, and I work in Audition. And there are some things that every software does very, very well. But there are some things that only Audition will do. Only Audition. And some people say that, oh, these programs will do this. I'm sorry, they don't. And the most important thing is this thing called Remix. Who's seen Remix? Mark Bryan has. And you have two people. This is awesome. I love newbies on Remix. You guys are going to walk out with a new religion, I promise. So who are my uh, music editors? You edit music or you have edited music. There's only two of you? Aw, oh, man. Okay, there's three. You guys in the back, music editors? Okay, four, five. Oh, thank you. Okay, at least I got a warm market. You know how it is. The director's upset. He wants your two-minute piece shortened. You got to cut it. You got to find the arrangement. You got to do the cross phase, and it doesn't work. And then he wants to edit it again and again and again, and you're like, ah, oh. right? You know what I'm talking about. Or maybe you're the director that's doing it. Yes. Yeah, okay. That makes more sense. Here's this track. I'm just going to play it for you. It's, it's a track I did for a movie called Curse of the Child Then Check it out. <laughs> Sure, right? Here's a different section. Oh, that's the same section. Let's find a different one. Cool, right? How about a different one? That sounds awfully similar. Go back here. Let's check out the end. There's the end. And you're like, okay, this piece, if we zoom in a little bit, you'll notice it's roughly two minutes long. And we have one of these directors, right? Four minutes here to, well, actually, it's a minute and a half. There you go. Director's upset. He's like, no, I like the piece, but it's got to be a minute. A minute, not a second longer. Okay. Well, we could use time compression, couldn't we? And how nice is that? No, it's like, you know, chalkboard time. Nobody likes that. Artifacts and everything else. I'm going to go here and right click. And if you notice, I'm going to zoom in, you can see Remix. Enable Remix. Look what's happening. Analyzing Clip. It takes a little while because it does a lot of work under the hood, which I have no idea how it does. If I did, I would be rich. See these little Aztec looking things? Don't be confused with the little square looking thing because that's for crossfades, which is a super another cool thing. I'll do it at a different uh, presentation. But the Aztec looking thing is Remix. See how it says that? Now I'm going to zoom out so I can see the time index. I'm going to drag this to here. Now it's a minute long and I get this little other Aztec looking thing. Again, square te technical terms. This is where it has made a crossfade, an algorithmic choice as to the best place in the arrangement to put the cut, done the cut. Let's see how it did. Whoa, whoa, did you miss it? Let's try it again. 
come on, come on. They got the dialogue right. They got the vocals right. Wait a minute, what? See, the, di the director's not impressed. He wants a 30 second version now. Okay, 30 seconds. 30 seconds is about right here. I'm gonna go like this. Watch this. Okay, here's another cut. Let's see how this one did. Let me zoom in so you can see what's going on. Wait, what? Wait, I gotta go back farther. That can't be. No time compression, no weird artifacts, perfect crossfades, but the director's not impressed. He wants a 15 second bumper, right? Isn't that what you want? Absolutely. Gotta have the bumper, because that's how he is. Okay. 15 seconds is about right here. Now we're just gonna listen to the whole thing, because there just ain't that much of the track left. <laughs> What? That's crazy. Time, crossfade, cut, smart arrangement, and the director's like, great, print it. Now I want a seven minute or a four minute. Give me a four minute. And you're like, oh man, make it longer? That's crazy. Well, let's see what old remix will do. Three, three minutes, we'll bring it out here. I gotta zoom out even farther. Make it really long. That's like seven minutes, right? Okay, I got two cuts. Let's see how it did. Cut the B section in two. That one worked. I couldn't tell that there was a crossfade. How about this one? Cut the C section in half and mated it with the A section. And now there's no time compression, no artifacts. I didn't have to pick up a scissor tool. Who's impressed? Nobody's impressed. Okay, yes, everyone's impressed. I'm impressed. I didn't even know about this until a couple of years ago. And I'm like, are you kidding me? This is fantastic. So this is Adobe Audition. There are many things that Adobe Audition only can do. Lest we talk about syncing ADR automatically with your reference dialogue, which I don't have time to show today, but uh, it's amazing. So again, Mark Edward Lewis. Cinemasound.com, I want to see you all there. I want to see you all responding and bringing your incredible creativity to the website. Thank you very much.